Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I have two studies that I want to discuss today, both of which have to do with GI health, gastrointestinal health. And I'm really pleased to see that the medical profession is starting to pay more attention to things like beneficial bacteria in the GI tract. That's the first thing I want to discuss today. And um, we'll just start with a, a working understanding of beneficial bacteria. There are trillions of organisms in the GI tract which do all kinds of wonderful things. They act as a barrier system for the uh, bloodstream, keeping things out of the bloodstream that shouldn't get in and also facilitating the absorption of nutrients from food. Um, these bacteria contribute to immune function, and a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of your serotonin is produced in the GI tract, so if you want to be a happier person, pay attention to GI health. Diet has a profound effect on these bacterial colonies, both directly and indirectly. Um, the traditional American diet is really low in fiber and high in protein and fat, which can result in constipation and irritation and inflammation in the colon, which in turn results in destruction of bacteria. On the other hand, a diet that is high in plant foods, high in fiber, contributes to maintaining healthy colonies of bacteria. So a recent study looked at the effect of adding plant fibers to the diets of healthy adult men who at the start of the study were consuming about 14 grams of fiber a day. I'm sorry to say that's about average for Americans. It's woefully inadequate, but it is about average. And so the men were randomized to eat three snack bars daily for 21 days that contained either no fiber, 21 grams of fiber, or 21 grams of soluble corn fiber and I have to say that I would have done this study differently and they wouldn't have been eating fiber bars they would have been eating high fiber foods but be that as it may you know the study did produce some significant results fecal samples were collected on days 16 to 21 of each period all forms of fiber resulted in significant increases in the amount of beneficial bacteria in the GI tracts of the men as measured in the fecal samples. So um, a high fiber diet is good for your GI tract. You won't have constipation, you won't develop inflammatory bowel diseases, and you'll be feeding the beneficial bacteria. In fact, just so you know, beneficial bacteria thrive on the remnants of carbohydrate. Pathogenic bacteria, and you can tell by the term pathogenic, don't want so many of those, they thrive on the remnants of animal food. So a low-fat plant-based diet like the one we recommend at the Wellness Forum contains at least 45 grams of fiber daily. And um, so this will reduce the risk of the conditions that I discussed earlier, but also reduce the risks of developing conditions like uh, infections that require the use of antibiotics, which destroy beneficial bacteria too. So those who've suffered from conditions ranging from simple constipation to inflammatory bowel diseases or who have taken antibiotics or steroids or other similar drugs that result and destruction of bacteria should take a good pharmaceutical grade probiotic in order to restore lost bacteria. Uh, for those of you who um, have never had those conditions, just keep, keep eating your high fiber plant-based diet and feed those friendly critters in your GI tract so they can take good care of you. All right, second study I want to talk about has to do with diet and diverticulitis. For whatever reason, I've been getting a whole lot of emails about this recently. So first I'll explain what diverticulitis is in case you don't know. It's a condition in which small pouches form in the inner lining of the intestine, and then they become inflamed or infected. Now, most of the time these uh, pouches are in the large intestine, and the main cause is diet. Too much animal food and processed foods that contain no fiber, or not enough fiber, um, and not enough fiber-rich foods like fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So the fiber issue is revisited as it pertains to diverticulitis. If you want to avoid a lot of bad conditions, eat a high fiber diet. Now, people who don't consume enough fiber or drink enough water often become constipated. I mentioned that previously. And they have to strain to have a bowel movement. And this straining increases pressure in the intestines. It's actually what contributes to the development of these pouches. It's very common, by the way. It's estimated that over half of Americans over the age of 60 have some of these pouches. It's just that most people remain asymptomatic. What happens, however, for some people, is that inflammation and infection take place when waste or feces become trapped in the pouches, and symptoms like bloating, constipation, and bleeding can occur. Fever, nausea, and vomiting can also develop as the condition progresses. 
Blood tests can identify the infection and scans and ultrasound are often ordered to confirm a diagnosis. Pain medications and antibiotics are prescribed and some people end up hospitalized. In fact, I have spoken with many over the years who've been hospitalized. Um, the pouches don't go away. Once the infection is clear, the pouches remain there. But if you convert to a plant-based diet, like the one we recommend with lots and lots of fiber, it's the best way to avoid a recurrence of the inflammation and infection and excruciating pain, I might add, that accompanies this condition. Studies show that people eat this type of diet, who eat this type of diet have a much lower incidence of diverticular disease than those who eat the standard American diet. Patients, by the way, are often advised to avoid eating foods like nuts and seeds because the rumor is that they get trapped in the pouches and, and really there's nothing to substantiate that, particularly for people that are eating the high fiber diet that we recommend. Um, you don't have to refrain from eating those foods. However, because they're calorie dense, you know the wellness worm diet says that uh, you need to eat those foods sparingly. So you eat nuts when they occur in a dish, not hands full of them. Um, did you know, by the way, that one cashew has 20 calories? Think about that for a minute. Think about how many calories a whole handful has. So, you know, don't go crazy on the nuts, but you don't have to stay away from them either if you've had diverticular disease. Um, one study that I'll talk about, researchers with the EPIC study, which is the European Perspective and Get Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition, reported last year, and this is a quote, consuming a vegetarian diet and a high intake of dietary fiber were both associated with a lower risk of admission to hospital or death from diverticular disease, end of quote. Subjects consuming more than 25 grams of fiber daily had a lower risk than those consuming less than 10 grams a day. As I mentioned earlier, most people in this country have a woefully inadequate fiber intake because foods they eat don't contain any fiber. So eat a high fiber diet combined with water, high water intake and you end up with large soft stools that are easily passed through the GI tract without forming any of those pouches. And um, most people who convert to this diet, by the way, claim that it's a moving experience and I think you'll see that if you do it too. So that's all for now. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news. Have a great day. And as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might benefit from listening to it.